Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. I got a new little camera set up for y'all. Matter of fact, the mount that I'm using, the tripod, I'm going to actually be able to vlog with. So we're going to be stepping outside, stepping around the city, explore some things. This is all new content that's going to be coming to the channel. And it's all because of y'all. Y'all support, y'all donations. Everything's keeping this channel running, man. I'm only just talking. I'm, I'm doing the least amount. You know what I mean? Y'all really the ones doing everything. So I appreciate y'all. And like I always say, I'm rocking with y'all like y'all rocking with me. Boom, right? I got a DM. I thought this was a fire idea. At first, I was like, why would I make a, a video about that? I know nothing about that. But it's a dope concept because it's going to give you a better understanding of how it actually is in prison. So this video is going to be about none other than PC, protective custody. Get me up out of here. I'm scared. I need to go right now. PC, listen, right? When you go PC, we don't have PC prisons. We don't have separation units. We don't have none of that. So when you go PC, you're going to get taken to confinement. They're going to put you in PC and you're going to literally be next to other people in confinement. You're going to be next to people that are in disciplinary confinement. You're not going to be just put into a PC dorm or nothing like that. No. So if people know you and you go PC, they're going to be in the cells next to you banging on the wall like, oh, you soft. I'm going to let your mama know when I get out. I'm going to tell your brothers they're going to kick your ass when you get home. All of that. Like, you're not hidden. You're not taken away from everybody. You still have to deal with the mental abuse of sitting in your cell and being threatened and having everyone just talk shit about you. The COs are going to talk shit about you. You have certain spots where the COs will not allow you to go PC. They're going to look at you and laugh at you and tell you to go back in there. If you get cut, then come talk to them. They're going to tell you you're not scared for your life. Why are you scared for your life? You're not bleeding out. What is wrong with you? Come back when you're dying. It's crazy. Lancaster CI, when we got off the bus at Lancaster, we literally had to line up and we were asked if you guys want to go PC or if you want to hit, you know, the orientation dorm, line up in these two different lines. So you had kids off rip, get off the bus and go right to the PC side. And you had other kids go, you know, right to the, I want to go through orientation two weeks and then I'm going to hit the main unit. You know what I mean? And in first quarter, you had kids go PC immediately, scared for their life. Once we finished the two weeks orientation, while we're going through that orientation, we're marching around on the compound, we're being seen by other dorms, other inmates. They might be pointing at us like, oh, you're going to be under me. You're going to be my jizzle. I'm taking all your stuff. Da -da 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 -da. It's, it's mental warfare. At this point, there's no physical confrontation. It's just all verbal. And it's how it affects you mentally as a human being. Do you feel that when you get put into that dorm, you're going to be able to handle this and handle this confrontation and handle, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 people coming at you at one time, especially if you have nobody on your side. So when your two, when your two weeks ends in orientation, once again, it's time for everybody to hit the compound. If you want to go PC, step in this line. If you want to hit the main unit, step in this line. And I mean... You'll probably, at that point, you'll probably have like one or two kids go PC immediately. But out of the 20 people that graduate out of orientation and hit the main compound, out of the 20 something people, it's, it's usually only one or two that actually stay on the compound. The rest of them either get hit up immediately or they check PC once they go inside of the dorms and they start getting poked up, you know, TOH, this and that. Protective custody. It's very dangerous in a sense because it does not save you. And, you know, there are a lot of PCs, but at the same time, there's not enough to keep you safe. And what I mean by that is, say, say it's me and, say it's me and Brando, right? Shout out to my brother Brando. Say it's me and Brando. And somebody went and cut Brando, but then they end up going PC to kind of like save themselves and get away from you know, our ability to get revenge. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go PC. I'm going to go PC right after you go PC. And what's going to happen is we're going to get put in a holding cell together and then we're going to get put in the PC cell together. So now we're in the same cell. You know what I mean? We're both PC'd. 
If he doesn't know me, I can play the role. I can act like I'm scared. I'm a scared white boy. I'm shivering. I'm shaking. You know what I mean? I don't want to be here just like you don't want to be here. And, you know, push comes to shove. When my people find out that I'm in confinement and I'm in PC, what they're going to do is they're going to write a letter and they're going to write a letter in my name as if I wrote the letter. But what they're going to do is they're going to leave out information on the letter. So what happens is when that letter gets put in the mailroom, it's going to get sent back to me as if I didn't fully write out the information correctly. So they send it back. The whole trick to it is you put half a razor blade behind the stamp. So when it gets sent back to me when I'm in confinement, now I have a razor. Now that same person that cut Brando, <clears throat> hitting them up. You know what I mean? That's how you do it. That's how you would get a razor back to confinement. If you don't have an orderly that can bring it to you, simple as that, real easy. It's very easy to hit people up that is still in PC. PC does not save you. It makes you a target to the COs. It's going to make you a target to the inmates. If you get your PC taken away and you come back onto the compound, that title is going to stay with you. They're going to know that you went PC. They, they know why you went PC most likely, but that brings me to... You know, another aspect of protective custody. You have guys that have all the respect that everyone knows is a complete savage. There's nothing soft about him. He's about that life, gang banging, whatever it is. And sometimes they'll go PC just to go to a better compound, just to go to a better prison. You know, if you're at a if you're in jail, what a lot of people do is they'll check in. If you get put into a jail pod where there's no money in there, there's no, you know, drugs, there's no K2, there's nothing going on, nobody's gambling, it's boring. It's boring to just sit around and do your time like that. So what they'll do is they'll check in. They'll go up and tell the CEO, yo, I'm scared for my life, and get put into another dorm or another another pod. And it's as simple as that. Everyone knows they're not soft. They're not soft. And that wasn't the reason they're doing it. They just want to get up out of there. So prison will be the same thing. But before you do that, you have to have a reputation. Otherwise, when you go to the next spot and someone comes and they're like, oh, yeah, he got shipped because of PC. They're going to question that. But if you're like, bro, what do you mean? I chewed up like, you know, 20 people on the compound. I was running mine. I had this, that and the third. But the compound was broke, whatever, whatever. Or I wanted to try to move closer to my people. Florida is so big, you know what I mean? When I when I got released from Appalachia CI and I took the bus to Tampa, I think it was like a, I don't know, like a seven hour drive or something like that. Or maybe it was like four hours. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but it was long. And when you're that far away from your people, you know, Bimba, he's from Miami. His people, imagine driving from Miami all the way to the top of Florida, which is like by Georgia. It's, it's a big state, you know? So a lot of people will try to go PC to get moved closer to their family so that they're able to get visitation, they're able to see their kids, whatever it is, you know, because people, you know, family members get older, family members pass away. Just because you're doing time doesn't mean time isn't affecting everyone else. So you want to be near your people at the same time. So not everyone that goes PC is going PC because they're scared or anything like that. You know what I mean? Some people are doing it and using it to their advantage. But at the same time, you got a lot of people that go PC because they can't handle that water. Or you have, you know, PREA, the Prison Rape Elimination Act. When someone gets raped, whether it's by a broomstick or whether it's by a booty bandit, they automatically get put in PC and there's a PREA investigation. And that's serious because, you know, people get hit with outside charges for doing things like that. You'll, you'll add time to your sentence for doing something extreme like that. And it, it's a crazy thing, you know what I mean? But... Not everybody that goes PC is soft. Not everybody that goes PC is scary. And there are times when COs will deny someone to go PC and that will result in that inmate getting severely injured by other inmates. And in some cases, when someone tries to go PC and they're denied it, they end up hurting themselves. You know, you might have someone that's getting extorted on a daily basis. You might have someone that's willingly giving up sex, but only because he's pretty much forced to. It isn't an option. It's either I do this or I get hurt. You know what I mean? And they try to go PC and they're denied it and they end up taking themselves out. You know, they either hang themselves or cut themselves or whatever it is. And that really comes down to just ignorant correction officers, you know, people that shouldn't be working these type of jobs. But 
It's a dangerous situation. I mean, you really don't want anything PC, protective custody related on your rap sheet. You don't want that in your history. You don't want to mess with someone that's been on PC. And at the same time, you know, people, as far as the extortion game goes, they think the kids that are on PC are the sweetest. Like, oh, we're going to run down on him. We're going to, he's going to tell on you and have your whole gang get swept up. So if there's, you know, 20, whatever you are, all 20 years are going to get put in confinement under investigation. He wrote you up. He's writing down names, whatever, whatever. And now your whole gang is getting sent all over the state of Florida to different locations. You know what I mean? They just broke your whole gang up because of an investigation. And I mean, you got gangs that will control kids that are soft and scary and say, hey, we're going to make sure you're good, but you're going to go PC and you're going to write him up and say that he did this. And that's a way that, you know, a lot of the lame gangbangers, the soft ones, the ones that ain't about that action, they'll try to get people off the compound. You know what I mean? Because they'll throw an investigation on you. You're going to be in confinement for like 60 days, 90 days, and then they usually ship you off somewhere else and you got to deal with the new spot you're at and then at the same time you got kids that go pc that you know aren't gangster enough to deal with this person but when they get put in the room in pc now they gangster so whoever they got in their room that's pc with them now they're trying to be gangster on that person so you might have someone that goes pc because he wasn't big enough to fight dude but now he's in the room with this little guy and he's gonna be the big gangster in this room and take his food and take his trays this that and the third it's crazy you know what i mean but from my experience you never put on pc you have to sign pc there's paperwork involved in protective custody. You have to be in fear for your life. That's what it is. You're being protected by the Department of Corrections, even though you're not protected in any way, shape, or form. Another thing that can happen is people will go PC against correctional staff. If you get involved into any altercation, especially physical, it is supposed to be mandatory that you are not allowed to be on that same prison compound as that correctional staff, nursing staff, whatever staff it is. If you get into a physical altercation, especially one that you initiated, because if they initiated it, they're not going to write it down. It never happened. But if you initiated it or they just lied on you and said you did, it's pretty much immediate that you're supposed to get transferred out. So you'll have people that go PC on COs because... You know, they might get beat by a CO when they write a letter to their girlfriend or whoever, whatever family members they have on the street. And they're like, hey, you know, this is what happened. I got beat. I'm in confinement right now. The captain just visited me. He said he's not going to give me food. He says when I get out on the compound, they're going to beat the shit out of me. They're going to gas me. They already gassed me. They're threatening me. And what's crazy is none of these things are lies. These are things that really happen. These are This is the type of pressure that the CEOs will put on you when you really make the CEOs your enemy. You know what I mean? When you have an issue with a correctional officer, a nurse, whatever, because, you know, usually they're married to each other. They come at you like a whole gang. And, you know, for certain people, that's what they do. They go the PC route. Now, some people are actually able to successfully pull this off. Their family, whoever it is, they'll call the news and have the news come down to the prison and make it a big deal. And it's understood by the correctional staff. Like, all right, we can't touch this guy. You know what I mean? He's got publicity around his name. We can't do nothing to him. But at the same time, for people that don't have family members, don't have any support system, don't have any contact with the street. You know, these are the people that generally end up dying by natural causes at the hands of the COs. These are the people that get abused. These are the people that are taken advantage of because they don't have anyone in society to hold them down. You know what I mean? And it's sad to think of in that sense, but from my experience, I never really saw protective custody saving anybody. You were still a target. You could still be hit up by either inmates or by staff. It's just, it's not a good situation to be in. Hopefully none of y'all ever have to experience anything like that. But I got new content coming soon. I'm going to be doing some vlogs coming soon. I already have the trip to uh, New York booked. I'm going to vlog the whole experience. But like I always say, I'm rocking with y'all like y'all rocking with me. Till next time.